For the past eight years or so, two words have concerned Pentagon planners more than any others as they figure out how to counter the military threat posed by China, hypersonic missiles. These missiles, dubbed specifically as aircraft carrier killers by Beijing, travel at speeds greater than Mach 5, making them much faster than cruise missiles. They are long-range weapons, with ground-based variants capable of striking targets at ranges greater than 1,500 miles. They also fly at unpredictable trajectories compared to the parabolic path of ballistic missiles, which potentially renders existing U.S. missile defense systems useless against them. Further complicating the unpredictability of the Chinese threats to U.S. Navy carrier strike groups is an air-launched hypersonic variant designated the PL-17, which has been spotted on the wing station of People's Liberation Army Air Force J-16 flanker derivatives. U.S. intel has assessed that the PL-17 is designed to be used both against surface targets, like U.S. Navy warships, as well as airborne assets like tankers and early warning aircraft like the E-2 Hawkeye. Beijing claims the PL-17's dual-pulse solid rocket motor and lofted trajectory give the hypersonic missile a maximum range of 250 miles, which is twice as long as the U.S. military's longest-range air-to-air weapon, the AIM-120 Delta. The key to prevailing against the PLAN in any scenario, whether it has to do with defending Taiwan or containing their influence inside the second island chain in the Pacific, is disrupting their kill chain defined as a sequence of tactical steps in which weaponry finds, engages, and kills targets. Obviously, it's a problem if the American fighters charged with protecting the aircraft carrier by shooting down Chinese fighters before they get into firing range are quote-unquote outsticked by a factor of 100% or roughly 125 miles. That calculus won't disrupt a key element in the PLAN's aircraft carrier-directed kill chain. But evidence has recently emerged that the U.S. Navy is taking deliberate steps to alter that part of the kill chain equation. As reported by our friends at the War Zone, a new weapon has been spotted under the wings of E and F model Super Hornets participating in this year's Rim of the Pacific or Rim Pack exercise in and around Hawaii. Photographer Aeros 808 spotted an FA-18 Echo from Strike Fighter Squadron 192, the Golden Dragons, at Joint Base Pearl Harbor, Hickam, Hawaii, carrying a pair of unusual missiles. The Golden Dragons are part of Carrier Air Wing 2 aboard the aircraft carrier Vinson, which is participating in RIMPAC. Aeros 808 also saw a flight of two VFA-2 bounty hunters, also attached to CAG-2, each loaded with a pair of these missiles. The missiles themselves, which have the NAIM-174 Bravo designation prominently applied to the forward end, are painted gray in contrast to the previous orange-colored example that was spotted flying near China Lake, California last April and not acknowledged by the Navy at that time. The missiles on the ramp at Hickam are marked with blue bands that means they are inert, no explosive warheads, and don't have a live motor. If the shape of these AIM-174s looks familiar, it should. It's basically an SM-6 standard missile used by the U.S. Navy's cruisers and destroyers adapted for airborne use. And that fact allows Internet super sleuths to reasonably guess about the AIM-174's capabilities and how it might be employed in the Western Pacific. As reported by TWZ, the surface-launched SM-6 was originally designed to tackle air-breathing aerial threats at long ranges, as well as ballistic missiles in their terminal stages of flight. And while the U.S. Navy has never identified exactly what missiles have been used by air and sea assets attached to its carrier strike groups, it's a safe bet to assume the SM-6 is among the weapons used in recent months against Houthi crews and ballistic missiles fired at ships in the Red Sea. Now, it also has a capability against hypersonic weapons under what the Pentagon cryptically refers to as specific circumstances. The SM-6 can also be used against ground and sea targets. Assuming this capability extends to the AIM-174, that would put it in the quasi-ballistic missile class, a highly relevant category of emerging air-launched weapons. TWZ points out that the SM-6 is also networked with the ability to receive critical data from an array of platforms that can provide remote targeting that is not organic to the missile's launch platform. In this sense, it would be able to exploit the various benefits of the Naval Integrated Fire Control Counter-Air Concept, or NIFCA, which is increasingly bringing together the complementary capabilities of platforms such as the F-35 Stealth Fighter, E-2D Advanced Hawkeye Radar Plane, Aegis-equipped warships, and weapons like the SM-6. For example, this architecture should allow a Super Hornet to use the AIM-174 to engage targets that are beyond the range of its own radar, as well as target sets it cannot otherwise handle, like ballistic missiles. 
So compare that concept of ops to the carrier-based gold standard during the final years of the Cold War, which was the F-14 Tomcat armed with the Phoenix missile. In ideal atmospheric conditions, the Tomcat's AUG-9 weapon system could detect a target with a large radar cross-section like a Russian Bear bomber at more than 150 nautical miles, and then commit the Phoenix at a maximum range of approximately 80 miles. And even though airborne early warning assets like the E-2 Hawkeye and AWACS and surface ships with Aegis radars had detection ranges outside of that, even if a Phoenix could go farther, there was nothing a Tomcat could do about it until it got within range of its onboard systems because the missile required guidance data in the initial and mid-course phases from the aircraft. But with NIFCA, the only limit is the kinematics of the weapon, not the limits of the aircraft's onboard radar systems. So as TWZ rightly points out, as an air-to-air weapon, the AIM-174 would provide the Super Hornet with the ability to engage a wide variety of aerial threats at distances of over several hundred miles, a significant advantage over the current AIM-120 AMRAAM. Air launch at speeds and altitude by a carrier-based fighter means the AIM-174 will have significantly greater ranges than the standard SM-6, which is around 230 miles. Kill chain disparity neutralized and maybe even reversed. And the fact that these missiles appeared at RIMPACT of all possible exercises is certainly not random. The U.S. Navy is sending a strong message to China. We know what you've got, and we intend to counter it, and then some. All right, that'll do it for this episode. More tactical updates as the information becomes available. So if you're not already a subscriber, become one so you don't miss anything going forward. And in the meantime, I look forward to talking to you again very soon.